All right, hi. I guess they told me I am. Are we on? Are we on? That's why I was just checking. Are we on? Are we on? Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought okay. they were talking about the cutaway. No, 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 no. I'm Skip Bird, and I'm going to talk to you about. What am I going to talk to you about today? Do y'all remember what my talk's about? Sun something. Sun something or others? Oh, uh, you guys are in trouble then. I can talk to you about anything I want now. Since yeah, you don't know what you're here for. Oh, you, oh, I won't say you'll be entertained, but it will be different. All right. I'm actually a NASA heliophysics ambassador. And what in the world is that? Since we're on live tape, I can't cuss, so I'm not going to, okay? You know, so what is that? Well, what that is, is I have been chosen by NASA. Me and 22 other people, and I don't know, have any idea why they chose me, but who knows? He's a sun guy. To be the sun, yeah, sun god, raw. I'm raw today. No, no. To be a NASA heliophysics ambassador. I got to go out to uh, Chicago in the middle of the winter. It's not something I would recommend. Okay, all right. It's not something I definitely recommend because it was cold. But, and I saw, well, I'll have to show you the picture later, but uh, we'll talk about that later. But basically, what it is, we're trying to go out and basically train teachers on how the science actually works. For six through eight, uh, I modified it for high school and down K through whatever grade you want to pick, okay? That's probably one of the reasons why I picked it. I was actually the only guy from an astronomy club that was in the group. Everybody else is like uh, planetarium, museum people, nature, you know, like large nature centers. There's the Adler Planetarium, they were there, they all these people, and I'm going, I'm just an astronomy club, what am I doing here? You know? So. Uh, first thing, I'm going to hand out a piece of paper, and they are numbered 1 through 14. And I'm going to just go say, newsflash, number 1, and then you're going to read number 1, okay? And then you're going to hand it to her, and she's going to read number 2, and then 3, and then work your way around until we get through them all, okay? All right, so we're going to do that. But basically what we're doing as the NASA Heliophysics Ambassador, we're going out and training teachers and non-teachers on how to teach the stuff about, oh, sorry about that, gravity rules all, okay? And by the way, when we're done at about 11 o'clock, I, I won't go, I'm, this question will come back, okay? <laughs> come back to haunt you, all right? So, yep, yep, so we're gonna do that. So um, we're gonna start out with that. Basically, it's to help teachers and non-teachers get the science straight. I actually had the science wrong. I've been teaching it wrong for at least a zillion years, okay? And I'll talk to you a little bit later about it, but right, real quickly, Y'all know that uh, the, it's the angle of the sun that causes the temperature changes on our planet, right? Okay. Well, it does, the incident. And I used to have this nice little flat piece of paper, and I put this flashlight on the little curved thing. So summertime, you know, it said summertime is pointing more direct down, and then down here it said wintertime is at an angle. Well, I was informed that it's not the sun that's moving, it's the earth that's moving. I said, well, I know that. Well, your model doesn't show that. So I had to put down... So what I did is I put the sun down here and I put the piece of paper on that and I went, summertime, wintertime. <laughs> there I go. I says, now does it work? All right, works fine. Works fine. I'm going, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. But that's okay. That's all right. That's what we're finding out is when you, oh, there is a test. Okay. There is a test. No, no, you don't need, I'm going to ask you to stand up and go to different corners of the building. You know, if you think A is true, go over here. If you think B is true, go over there. If you think C is true, go home. Okay, that type, that type of stuff, that type of stuff. So we're going to do that. So our very first thing we'll jump in here is jump in here with our PowerPoint. And that should be number, f oh, by the way, if you're expecting some whiz-bang PowerPoint video mogul thingy, it ain't happening. Okay, you're lucky I'll be able to read what's up there. Ha, ah, unit one. There's actually five, four different units. All right, and this is on the GEMS curriculum sequence. You can get all the technical details found on the website, or you can talk to me later. I'm not going to bore you with that stuff. All right. So the very first thing we're going to do is, ah, the case of the mysterious events. Dun, 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 dun. I have that song, so I could have put it on there, but I didn't. Okay. The case of the mysterious events. Breaking news story. Read breaking story number one. Mount Everest, halfway around the world. That's okay. Keep going. I'm just so you can get picked up on the microphone. Oh, okay. The California club members were communicating with the expedition by shortwave radio when suddenly 
At 3.18 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, all radio signals were interrupted. <sighs> At first, club members feared that the expedition may have encountered an avalanche or some other mishap. Oh, no. But they were relieved to learn that everyone in the expedition was safe when the radios began to function normally about an hour later. All right. Whew. Whoa, good. They were safe. So that breaking story is okay. Ah, breaking story number two. Air traffic controllers in Chicago reported that 15 airplanes in various parts of the country lost radio contact for about an hour. The problem occurred at 3.18 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time and continued until 4.20 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Okay, I hope somebody's taking notes on what those times are and dates are, but that's okay if you're not. I told you there'd be a test. Breaking news number three. Okay. International Space Station radiation sensors showed very high levels of x-rays and gamma rays earlier today. The usual radiation was detected at 3.18 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Sensors report... Sources report that analysts in Washington, D.C. Defense Department s spent the rest of the evening investigating the incident. All right, good job, good job. Okay, uh-oh, the plot is thickening, okay? The plot is thickening. There, and by the way, you know what the radiation detectors on the ISS are? Four astronauts who close their eyes, and if they see flashes, they consider that radiation, and they report it. You laugh, but I have, I've, I've talked to Don Thomas and he does that. All right, breaking news, next one. ABC television broadcasts were disrupted today for two hours. Oh, no. Ah, I, that was catastrophic, <laughs> TV interrupted for two hours. Who cares about radiation and space missing snowboarders, but <gasps> I can't watch the X-Files, oh no, help me, Mr. Bill. Go ahead. Next, oh, hold on, ah, there we go. They immediately suspected a nuclear explosion in Los Angeles. <laughs> ah, yeah. Oh, wait. Las Vegas or Los Angeles? It said Los, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, right? Oh, man. I thought maybe somebody blew up Las Vegas. Oh, well. Oh, hold on. Oh, wait. That's April 23rd. That's two days later. Ha! Next newsflash. Uh, which one is this? Five? After the newsflash one. Six. 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 A huge power surge caused electrical blackouts in New York, Boston, and Seattle. Power was restored to Boston after four hours and Seattle after six hours. Whoa, so power outages. All right, whoa, -oh. now we got power outages two days later, too. Hmm, hmm, I smell something and it's not ozone. Maybe it is. All right, newsflash number seven. Wait, that happens every day. At least most of every day. All right, and next. Oh, no. Hello. Cell phones across the Western United States stopped working today. Oh, 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 I can't Twitter. Oh, who's Twittering? No, oh, no. Oh, wait, that's not cell phones. They had cell phones? Ha, ah, back in the old days when we didn't have cell phones. It was so much nicer. We didn't have this problem. All right, next one. Next. Breaking news. Oh, actually, that happened one time. I'll talk about it later. But hey, all right. And the next one that goes over there, that young man right there. Come on, hurry up. News flash, man. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, New York blackouts continue right after that one 10, 11, something like that. Go ahead, read it. It's all right. Here. All right, news flash, blackout there, number 10, here, number 10, calling number 10, calling number 10, number 10, number 10, oh wait, that's number 9, number 9. continues in New York, traffic lights are out, causing traffic problems, and some looting is taking place. Yeah, looting. I like looting. All right, number 11. 
Number 11. Compass readings show that Magnetic North has returned to its normal position today after its unusual shift yesterday. Ooh, Magnetic North can move? Cool. Learn something new every day. Yes. Uh-oh. Dun, 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 dun. Aww. And number. Yay! We're all happy. That should be the last one, right? Yes. Okay. Ah, and the blackout's finally over. Yeah, there was another one. That's okay. Blackout is finally over. Everybody is happy. Yeah, finally ended the day. We got power back, and all the. All the uh, TVs are back on, they're all back on the station and everything like that. So this is a quick, concise summary of what happened. April 20th, ah, everything's going along fine. Look, look, April 20th, there it is, April 20th, everything's going along fine. Suddenly, we have snowboarders, Mount Everest, which we didn't talk about, air traffic control out of Chicago, ah, we got contact back, <gasps> radiation, 318 Pacific Daylight Time, ah, 22nd, no news is good news, okay. Then on the 23rd, TV disrupted, unusual colors, blackout, cell phones, magnetic north shifted. 24th, lights out, still lights out, no cell phone still. It returned, <gasps> they're still under there. Cold weather, of course, unfortunately had nothing to do with anything, but it's in there. Blackout continues, cell phones are back, and then everybody's back and happy on April 26th. Okay, now, if this was actually the training course, I'd be handing out papers and you'd have a variety of things from satellite information sheets to what the satellites picked up, why different ones were disrupted, a solar activity with sun surface, weather information sheet. There's a variety of handouts, nuclear weapons testing, seeing what's going on there. Because now we're going to investigate why this happened. What, what happened? We don't know. Some of you got to guess, but we don't know. So now we're taking all, and the kids are doing all of this. Okay, the kids are actually investigating what we just talked about with this newsflash. Okay, and then they would take the papers and they get in their teams and their groups, and then they're invest. Well, mine says that this was happening. You know, well this and here says this was happening, and they have to basically figure out among themselves what the process, or not what the process, but what actually happened. Okay, and we all know what happened, right? Who thinks they have a guess? The Russians attacked. Both. It was both. Actually, it was April 21st, 21st of, I think it was 1989 or something like that when we had the big one come through that caused all of this. It was an actual event. All right. Uh, yes, there was a solar flare, a uh, small X class or something along those lines. I don't remember what the exact um, number was. But the kids are having to go through all of this to figure that out. And they really never give them the answer. You know, they come up with, okay, we think it was this, this, and this. Okay, and then they have to back it up with what their reasoning was, okay, from their information sheets. And some of the, well, I know that if this happens, you know, my dad told me this and everything like that. Well, that's not necessarily good if they actually have to back it up with the facts, all right? So they do a pretty good job of it. And this is all to get kids or students or whatever grade you're talking about, students, I should say students, whether they be young ones or older ones. Although she's probably just as young as he is, so you're in trouble. Lucky for you, we're in West Virginia. Okay, all right. So, and again, there's the different sheets that you can see. You know, I got damage reports on key satellites, report disabled cell phones, and they get all of this stuff, and they're using it to try and figure out what happened. And we're trying to teach them, you know, is that that STEM stuff, you know, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, or it's stupid teachers excitedly mouthing other stuff too. See, that's STEM. But, uh, uh, you know, and I'm one of those. All right. Now, let's see. Where's our test? Yes, here's our test. I don't know if you guys can read it, so I'm going to read it for you. All right. Question number four. <laughs> Whoa, what happened there? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all right. Question number one. There's question number four. Where's number six? All right. Well, never mind. I guess I'll just read you the prequest myself here, you know, if I can find it. There it is. All right, which travels, and by the way, we all, 
At this point now, I would give them the pretest, and there will be a post test. But for you guys, there's only going to be a test. And if you fail this one, you'll be taken out back and shot. Well, that, everybody's going, yeah! <laughs> you know? It's like my fifth graders when I say, and those of you who fail the test will have to handle the snake tomorrow. They're all going, they're all putting big X's on their page because they won't play with the snake. Who cares about the test? All right, question number one. Which travels slowest from the sun to the earth? Okay, you can only circle one, though. Circle one. All right, which travels the slowest from the sun to the earth? A, ultraviolet or UV. B, infrared. C, particles. D, x-ray. Ah, she raised her hand. C. By the way, if you don't raise your hand, you don't win the prize. C, which is? Particles. Particles. All right. So she thinks C. Hmm. What do you think? Same. What do you think? C. Uh, don't go with the group, man. Don't go with the group. Sometimes they're wrong, okay? Question number two. We're voting. Yeah. Which protects us from harmful particles from the sun? Circle one. Only one. All right. Which protects us from harmful particles from the sun? A, sunscreen. B, the magnetic field of Earth. C, the moon. D, ozone in Earth's atmosphere. I think there should be an E, but I'm not going to say it. Yes, sir. D, D what one? Uh, I say B. You say B. 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 He woke up enough to say the answer. Good, good, good. good. To be contrary, I'm saying all of them. I was saying all of them, yes. And that is a discussion we had for a half an hour. Because they all do, to some effect, stop particles from the sun, okay? Not all the time, not everywhere, but they do. I mean, you look at sunscreens. Technically, they're stopping energies, right? Photons. Photons of particles, see? So, okay, there we go, there we go, okay? The magnetic field of the Earth, because particles have charges, that's the main, that's the supposed correct answer particles, okay, is B, is the magnetic field of the earth, but it doesn't always, and, you know, but it does, it does stop some of the moon, if the moon's in the right position, it'll stop particles too, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the ozone, the earth's atmosphere, yes, it does to some extent, it, occasionally a particle will interact with it, not a lot, more energies, you know, more, but again, photons are particles, you know, and we'll hear that later when we play Bohemian Gravity, okay, all right, so, that was our discussion. They all do. That's why I said E, all of the above. But no, they want the, the, and the, the more scientifically correct answer is B, the magnetic field of the Earth. And that's, I, I don't know why they had this, but this is, and by the way, I was one of the people going, uh, all of them, all of them, you know. And we don't care what the kids answer, what their answer is, because we're, later on we're going to ask them, well, why is that? Why did you choose that one? You know, and I'd say, well, mainly near, you know, uh, eclipses, near new moons, the sun's, the moon's in a way. You know, you know, it can stop it. I didn't say, it doesn't say all the time or part of the time. It just says it does. All right, question number three. Which protects us from harmful electromagnetic energies? Mag no, it's not particles now. It's magnetic energies from the sun. Circle all the correct answers. Sunscreen. A, B, the magnetic field of the earth. C, the moon. And D, ozone and earth's atmosphere. Which ones do you think stop, help protect us against dangerous electromagnetic energies? B. B, the magnetic field of the Earth. B. I know, you're going to be difficult, so I'm going to skip you. Ozone. Ozone, that would be D. B, B and D. I'm not going to vote this time. Ah, how about you? <laughs> Okay? They, again, electromagnetic energy, sunscreen, does protect us against UVA and UVB, right? So technically, A, sunscreen, right? The magnetic field of the Earth doesn't do much against energies, but it does help, which is B, doesn't help much, does help against particles, but technically that's not an energy. That's not a physical particle. So, but again, it does some, okay, it does, again, and then the moon, again, the moon's in the way. Okay, moon stops a lot of stuff. And then ozone, the Earth's atmosphere. So basically, the politically correct answers are B and D. All right, that's the politically correct answer. But all right, now, oh, hey, we're up here to this one. 
Is the sun's output the same? Circle yes or no. And explain and give specific examples to back up your answer. We're not going to go into this because this was even a longer discussion than with the, the previous one about all four of them. Uh, all we're looking for, all we're trying to get the kids to do is justify their answers. You know, why? Well, not because my dad said so, or I saw it on Wikipedia, you know, uh, things along those lines. We are trying to get them to explain, is the sun's output always the same? My first question is, on, on what time scale? Well, and then I'm going, and to what percentage? What percentage? I'll tell you, you know, my, my personal opinion, it's no. It's never the same. Then again, I'll turn you around and tell you, yes, it's always the same. Because on a long-term scale, it's never the same because it's gradually getting brighter. To what, one thousandth of a, like one degree every, what is it, two million years? It's five million years, something like that. Uh, is the sun's output the same? Yes, because overall, if you average it out for a certain amount of time, even with the sunspots, it's less than a thousandth of a percent difference, okay? from the peaks and the valleys. But then again, you're averaging out. So you got peaks, you got valleys, you know, that type of stuff. It's not always the same, but you have to give examples. And then question five, what things are coming? Oh, this is one I like. What things are coming toward the earth from the sun? You know what my first one was? Was asteroids. They go, asteroids? I said, yeah, they swing around. The sun's gravity pulls them, swings them, and shoots them towards the earth. We've got 1,500 of them at this point. And they go, oh, well, maybe what well, things are coming directly from the sun to the earth. List as many things you can to be spe bleh, specific as possible. Next, each thing you list, right? How it can harm us, help us, or both. So give me something that comes from the sun. Any, yes, you, sir. Yes, you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Uh, question is, what things are coming from the earth, or towards the earth from the sun? What things? What things? Notice it says things. Uh, photons. Photons, all right. Would that be visible light or just, just yeah. photons? Okay, visible light, visible light. Okay, does that help us, harm us, or both? Kind of harms us. Oh, so it's both. Yeah. Why? What helps it? Why is it helping? Because And too bright, it hurts our eyes and so. Okay, all right. What else is coming from the sun? Well, you bring down UV, IR, X-rays. Pick one, pick one. X-rays. X-rays, okay. Good, bad, or indifferent? Or both? Uh, indifferent. Indifferent? Why? Because there's not enough to really harm us. Hmm. Hmm, yeah, there you go. I was going to say, hmm. Okay, yes, sir. Neutrinos. <gasps> oh my God, two million of them just went through my body. <laughs> Maybe that explains a lot. Okay, good, bad, or different? Indifferent. Why? Not always necessarily. Ah, but there's a non zero, as Sheldon would say, there's a non zero chance, you know? Yep, yep, yep. There's non zero chance that the sun would go something weird, but uh, no. Okay, again, how, what level do you want to go into? What level do you want the kids to go into? How detailed do you want them to come up with their answers? But mainly, you're just trying to see do they have a justification? Again, we're always going back to why did they choose that answer? All right. I used to work with the uh, Baltimore City uh, school system, and uh, we were writing MSA tests or writing and reviewing MSA tests for the fifth grade. And one of the things they look at is not only do they come up with the answers, but they want to know what, when the kids do take the test, what the wrong answers and why. The number one, we had this question, says, name the three states of matter and draw a picture. Okay, the three states of matter, draw a picture. The number one wrong answer, 18% of the wrong answers was Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. <laughs> And we're going, what? And that was the number one wrong answer, okay? This, uh 18% of all the wrong answers. That was a, that's a large chunk. Most of the time, your wrong answers are scattered everywhere. You might have a few that are 5 or 10%, you know, at the moment. 1% wrong answers? 
No, 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 no. There's probably 40% wrong answers. But out of, the, out of all the wrong answers, 18% was that one answer. And then they had to draw, you know, a little diagram of a solid, a liquid, and a gas. Everybody drew a solid. Most of them drew a rock or something like that or a brick, you know, something solid. Then the liquid, they, some of them would draw raindrops, some of them would draw a glass of water, things along those lines. But the number one wrong answer for gas was they showed some guy putting in, putting in gas into a car. And I go, that's not gas, that's gasoline, and that's a liquid. We had to count it wrong, because it's not a gas, okay? And so we had to figure out, why are, they, why are they doing this? What's going on, okay? And that's when we started checking with Uh, they could draw, we would, we, we accepted a cloud, we accepted little, we allowed them to put, uh, we even mentioned that they could use bubble diagrams, and that's the way it was taught in class, was the solid, the bubbles are all close together, liquids, they're kind of, you know, in a, in, a, in a jar or a glass, and they got the, and then the gas, they're just kind of arrows pointing every which way and going every which way, okay? So that's how we was hoping they would do it, but that's not how, I mean, the, a lot of the kids that got it right did that. But the ones who got it wrong, you know, were showing the guy putting gasoline in the car. You know? Oh. You know, so, and that's why, that's why we, well, that's some of the things that's going on with this. We're trying to correct, there's a lot of misconceptions, even among teachers, okay? And, they, and what they say. Ah, oh, well, I, I gassed up the car the other day. Well, homophones are confusing. Yeah, yeah, homophones. And remember, because I was teaching in Baltimore City, these are inner city kids, they may not have a car. They might not have a car. So okay. Get it right. Well, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe who knows, okay? All right, so that again, that's the pre-questionnaire, and they do this for each of the sections. I don't know why there's two of them in there. There we go. And then uh, the last one is how does the sun earth let's see, draw the sun earth system. Normally they have somebody come up here and do it on the board, but I'm not going to. It says label the sun and the earth. Show sizes and distance from each other. Add words or arrows to show how they move and include anything else to show how the sun and earth affect each other. So this is just asking them to do a little simple thing. They got one sheet of paper, you know, and I'm going, I'm going, well, first thing I did was not to scale. I wrote across there. And they go, what does that mean? I said, well, I drew, a, I put a little dot in the middle, okay, and said that's the earth. And then I took my other sheet of paper, I flipped it over, and I drew a big circle on the back, and I said, go outside and hold this. <laughs> and that's probably the right scale, you know? I go, okay, okay. But again, it's what we're trying to find out what their image is. Because again, this is a pretest. Now, once they've all done a pretest, they do a pretest for all four sections. Each time you go through a complete section, which is here, here's unit one. Did I get unit one out? Yeah, let me pull out unit one just to show you an example real quick. All right, so unit one, how's the sun affect the earth, all right? There's a variety of all the stuff we're gonna go in. I'm not gonna go through it, but there are a variety of stuff in here. You can always find it on the website and stuff along those lines. But we're testing, we're basically teaching them how does the sun, you know, sun earth, sun space weather, that type of stuff. How is it affecting us, all right? And these courses can be, these sections can be as short as an hour if you wanna do it that way. They can be long as several weeks. How detailed do you wanna go into it? Uh, being a science teacher, I always started out with astronomy because it all begins there, you know. And then it jumps, well, actually, technically it begins with physics, but we'll start with physics and astronomy and the Big Bang, and I work my way up through chemistry, biology, and then into stupidity, or us, whatever you want to call it, okay? All right, but again, how that affects them. And then once they've gone through a section, yes, sir, question? I'm sorry, you know, it's just, now that you're, as you're describing it, you mentioned about how you're trying to handle kids at, you know, people at various levels. Mm -hmm. You get these questions where, you know, if you're unaware of quantum stuff yeah. and yeah. particle duality or something like that, that makes this answer complicated. Right? Yes, it would yes. otherwise yeah. seem trivial. So in terms of the educational system, at what point do you start to introduce the idea of, well, waves and particles are sort of, it doesn't It's kind of like when you're having a discussion with kids about sex. And there are nine. Do you go into the ins and outs? Yeah. No. Okay. You just say male, female, and things like that. As they get older, you might get into more technical details. 
Okay? And that's somewhere along the way, you're going to start getting into the stuff that you got to cover your ears because you can't talk about because you're in here, okay? But stuff along those lines, okay? So is that built into Yeah, years? it's built into that. We're trying to, what we're finding is that between basically middle school all the way up to middle school, there's two things that all kids are excited about, space and dinosaurs, okay? After middle school, there's two things they're excited about, video games and the opposite sex or less, okay, all right. What happened to them in those four years, or three years, or two years, you know? I tell people, you know, sixth grade was the best five years of my life. You know? uh, but one, puberty hit, okay, that, that explains part of it. But it's, there's a lot of different factors. If we knew what the answer was, we could fix it. It's everything from it's not cool to be smart, that type of stuff. They've got distractions, you know, there's other things being put on. There's all kinds, there's thousands of reasons why it's not working. And all we're trying to do is kind of sift through that and try and get them at this point to question things, you know, like those old bumper sticker question authority, you know. Uh, we are the people your parents warned you about, that type of stuff, you know. So we're just trying to get them to not believe everything they see or hear on the TV or on the internet, because we all know that's 100% correct. Right? Right. He's over there going, I'm asleep already, man. You lost me. So you started <laughs> bad-mouthing video games. <laughs> all right. But that, and, and that's what all this, this, this that's what the NASA Heliophysical Management do. All we, our job is to go out there and try and correct misconceptions. And there's a bunch of them out there. Okay? There's a bunch of them out there. But we're not going to go into all of those. But that, that's basically what I do. I go around and I teach teachers. You know, key concepts. I spent a week at the Carroll County Fair, Carroll County 4-H Fair, and four days at a science fiction convention, hooking people in. You ever seen a star? You want to see a star in the daytime? Come on over here. I want to show you a star in the daytime, okay? I, go, I gave them a prize that they could tell me what star it was after they looked at it. They're looking at it through a telescope. What star is that? Polaris? I don't know. Uh, uh, Arcturus, you know? Uh, and they're, you know, of course... Most people, you know, again, some people look through telescopes, some people haven't. You know, we know the answer, but the, the sun is a star. It's also the closest star. It's also the closest star to us at the present time. <laughs> again, 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 it's, it's all, well, are you sure? You know, again, remember some of those answers, depending on what level you went. Uh, in fifth grade. To, to the fifth grader, mass and weight are the same thing. And we tell them that. So right now, mass and weight are the same thing. When you get in the eighth grade, you'll find out mass and weight are two different things depending on what planet you're on or whether you're on a planet or not, you know, blah, blah, blah. But right now, this is all you need to know, you know. Later on, then when you get into high school, mass and weight are not the same thing even when they're on the same planet, okay? You know, that type of stuff because gravity changes, fluctuates, you know, uh, all kinds of things, you know. So... Again, you're, it's, it's the level that you're going to cover the kids, cover the kids. But the sun is a star, okay? All right? We use models to demonstrate ideas, explain observations, make predictions. That's what we do. I do a whole class on models. I come in my little G.I. Joe guy, six foot tall, got hair and muscles, and I go, that was me two weeks ago. All right? That was me two weeks ago. All right, three weeks ago. Okay, okay, okay. A month ago. That was me. All right? But we use it because, hey, we can't bring the sun into the building. We can't bring the solar system into the building. But one of the things I do is we make pocket solar systems, you know, and we make those. Or we'll make glow-in-the-dark constellation maps, you know, those, those type of stuff, right? The sun, and again, we can go to the distance and stuff like that. You've all seen this picture here. This is our sun. Ooh, look, there's our Earth. Wait, that's the thing I'm standing on. You know, it takes 7.2 7 million of them, of me, to go from one side of the planet to the other, 7.2 million. Head to toe, head to toe. You drive down the road, boom, 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 boom. What was that? Oh, that was Mr. Skip. Don't worry about it. There's another 7 million of him. You're out there on the ocean. You're watching the sharks going, rah, 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 rah. what are they doing? Ah, they're having a feeding frenzy. Don't worry, it's Mr. Skip. There's a lot more of him, okay? Because yeah. that, you know, a million Earths, 109. And our, by the way, is our sun a big star? No, it's in the bottom 30% in size. Of course, top 70% in quantity, but 30%. And it still takes eight minutes for the fastest thing we know to get here. Eight and a half minutes, technically. But 
That's what you're trying to do with the kids. They don't know. You guys are uh, around astronomy, but if I whipped out something like molecular biology, some of you might go, oh, well, mitochondrial what? You know? what, what is a, what's the RNA, DNA, and R, RBC, and all the good stuff is? Yep, and by the way, everything is in metric. You know that, right? The rest of the world is metric. Okay, okay, okay. So if you want to talk about being behind, that's America. The rest of the world is metric. Science is metric, I just tell them that. Oh, I like this one here. Only a small amount of energy, of all the matter and energy that the sun puts out comes towards the earth. Yes, sir? The rest of the world is Well, that's true. There's a, couple There's a couple of people who are actually still in troy ounces and something or other. Uh, shekels, I think, what it is. Yeah, okay. All right, now I don't have the diffraction grading that I was gonna put up here and show you the spectrum, so. But again, this is all different things we can do. Roy G. Biv, you know they demoted Roy G. Biv? We're no longer teaching Roy G. Biv in schools, in, in elementary. It's Roy G. Biv. They've eliminated, well, this one here, notice? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Indigo is gone. Yeah, it was demoted. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. It was demoted. Okay, so it's Roy G. Boof. All right. Because indigo is a complicated color. You don't have indigo anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's partially blue, partially violet. And I said, well, then let's get rid of orange, because it's part red, part yellow. You know, let's, well, let's go. Let's go rag. You know, huh? Primary and secondary. That's yeah, yeah. And we're looking at this. Oh, one of the things I do for the kids when we're studying the electromagnetic spectrum, I have a microwave. I bring a microwave into the classroom to my programs, and I'll put a glass of water in there and I'll, we'll, we'll turn it on. I have all the kids get up close and watch it, you know, watch it boil. And we talk about, so, well, they talk about why it's boiling. And I've said, oh, say, no, when they're all done talking about why the water boiled and we finally get, it's all these particles and the energy's hitting and stuff. I said, why didn't you cook your face? Why didn't your face cook? You were sitting there looking at it. You know, you were, you were just as close as the glass of water was. Why didn't your face cook along with it? You know, and then we go into different sizes of wavelengths and stuff like that because it's a good, good segue into that. But most people, electro microwaves, well, they've heard of a microwave. They didn't know it was part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. Radios? Why do they call them radios? Why do they call it radio waves? The infrared. I love infrared. You can't see infrared. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. I hold up my camera and I'll put the little remote control at it and say, can you see it? And I'll press the note and I'll put it at the camera and you can see it blink. So the camera can see it. Why can't you? So there are a lot of different things, and there's key concepts again. <gasps> ah, and I do a program, I did it last year, I think it was, called Light, It's All Astronomers Get. And I go out and I'll make the, the brass statement that 98% of all astronomers are blind. You too, okay? They're blind because they don't study. Less than 2% of all astronomers study visible light. They all study infrared, radio, gamma rays, x-rays, all these other stuff. They can't see that. They're blind to those energies. They have to translate it. So if you're physically blind, you have to translate visible light into something, sound or texture or something along those lines. So they're just doing it slightly different. Okay. There we go. And that's the sun radiates. Okay, we can go there. We can ignore all that. Look at those pretty pictures. Too bad. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get out of there. The multi-wavelength sun. We're not going to see any of that because we're not multi-wavelengths. All right, we, oh, there, sorry. The solar wind. By the way, we know we're missing a G3 class storm, right? Happened the night before last. Happened the night before last. Never came down this far south, okay? I checked it out last night. I actually went out to look to see if I could find it. The solar wind is a constant stream of charged particles that the sun puts. Is it constant? What, see, see? There you go, there you go. When we state stuff like this, solid, liquid, and gas, all right? We put gas in the car. We're making misrepresentations or we're not getting our key concepts down. Again, that's what we're all we're trying to do as heliophysics ambassadors is to go around and correct it. You would be surprised. And I'd say if we did it in this place and you weren't doing it in public, the storm, we're revisiting the mystery. Okay, now, now we're going back and we talk about the sunspot cycles. Now we're looking at the magnetic field, what happened on the sun, why it did what it did. We're now answering the question about <gasps> what happened to the snow borders? What happened to the cell phone disruption? What happened to the blackout? And by the way, when that blackout happened, I called, I had just moved from uh, New York to Maryland. 
I called all my friends up in New York City and told them, go up on the roof of their apartments. I want to show them something they had never seen before from their house. And they go, what? They go, I said, yeah. I go, I got five or six of them to go up on their roofs and look. I said, what do you see? Look up. What do you see? They go, what do you see? I see the sky. I said, no, what do you see up there? They said, I see stars. I said, you ever seen stars from the roof of your building before? No. There you go. I told you you would. Okay. So they were all pissed off at me. Because <laughs> I called them at 2 in the morning, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Again, key, con yeah. Uh, key concepts, solar flares, coronal mass ejections occur during solar storms when the sun is active. They occur a lot of different times, but mostly they cover at that point. Again, you can go through this stuff here, okay. So a large amount of energy. There's a solar flare released enough energies to power our entire planet for years, okay, if we could have some way to, har if we could have some way to harness it. And by the way, uh, the, they've searched, uh, what is it, 100,000 stars within so many light years of Earth, and they have not found any Dyson spheres in our galaxy, okay. So that was good news. Corona Master Jackson, again, key concepts. All right, I'm going to just zip through all of this stuff, all right. But again, this is all... All chapter one, you can, like I said, you can go through this quickly, you can do anything along those lines, okay? So that is basically what a NASA heliophysics ambassador does. Uh, at the present time, they're still trying to find funding to do another round of instructors, okay? If they get a chance, do it. It's really good. It will basically improve your knowledge a lot too, and it'll help you spread the correct word. Correct word, notice I said correct word, okay? <clears throat> And this has nothing to do with NASA Heliophysics Astronomy, but another program that I am uh, in, in working with with NASA is the Skynet Junior Scholars. I talked about that last year. It's basically middle school to high school age kids working with research grade telescopes and cameras to actually do their own research. There's no limits. And you basically, what you want to do? One guy decided he wanted to find Kuiper Belt objects, you know. So he's looking for them, and he's found four candidates that were being investigated by bigger scopes and people with doctor degrees to find out really if they were Kuiper Belt because they didn't show up on any of the asteroid list or the, the, the list. So this kid has found four of them, all right? Because he just said, well, I'm going to look here, and I'm going to look here at, over the next eight months, you know, and take a picture every single day. And because the uh, group of telescopes are scattered all the way around the planet, we, we did a three-day continuous visualization of Jupiter, okay? Unfortunately, the cameras don't go slow enough to take pictures of Jupiter because it's so overexposed, but we got all the moons for three days with no more than a two-hour gap between any one picture, all right? And so we got this nice little video of all the moons of Jupiter. These three days of the moons, one of them going, <laughs> you know, the other one kind of goes, Doot across and we don't see him again for a while and then another one goes across and back you know so that was an unintended consequence of us trying to get you know uh, uh, three days rotations of, of Jupiter well we didn't know that at the time that's but that's something that we're doing in fact I start up another class here uh, the 17th of September um, with a homeschool group we're gonna, they're all going to become Skynet juniors but that's something that's out there and they're, they're actually getting ready to start one online uh, the 14th of September, which if you go to Skynet Junior Scholars, you'll see an application. Fill it out, go on, do it. It's really cool to do, okay? Uh, uh, they, they're, they're, they're targeting middle schoolers, okay? Sixth to eighth grade. But there, I do it with younger kids. I do it with older kids. The younger kids, we don't quite go into as much detail. I just use my own account, and we'll, we'll say, hey, let's take pictures of this. The older kids, like in high school, they actually, I make them do paperwork, you know, the math, okay? Why do you want to look at the moons of Neptune? Or why do you want to look at planetaries? Or what do you, you know, I try and get them into research. Even if it's just, well, I just want to see what the different styles and, you know, like different shapes are, okay? Well, why do you want to see what different shapes? Can you explain them? Are you going to explain them? You know, things along those lines. The Skynet Juniors is that, and the, the uh, uh, NASA Heel of Physics is the same thing. We're trying to get kids interested because someday they're going to be the senators who control the money, a congressman who controlled the money. They might even be lucky enough to be a president one day. And I go, oh, wow, I remember looking through a telescope when I was a kid and I saw Saturn. And we're sending a probe to Saturn. Yeah, let's do it. Okay? I vote for it. I don't care what you... No, you don't get your appropriations for your, for your tree forest factory, you know. 
in your, in your city. I want to go see Saturn. I'm not going to write it off. So again, you can do that. And that is it. So I am done. Any questions? <coughs> questions? Yes, sir. Um, the materials you presented here today, you, were, you seem to be referring to the book and the mm -hmm. materials. Mm -hmm. Are some of that available? It's all books? online. Yep, you can get it all. Books or? Yep, yep, including the books. They are Jim's Curriculum Sequences, uh, Space Science Sequence introdu Introduction from Carolina Curriculum. Okay. They have an entire kit, big yellow. I actually have two of these big yellow boxes. All right. I was going to have us go outside and play with our styrofoam balls and straws and, you know, go out there and we're going to show the tilt of the earth. Uh, things along those lines, but I decided that that was too much fun. What okay. Monday? Well, maybe we can. All right. A, we have no moon to compare it with. It's usually, you go outside and try and make your ball look like the moon in the sky. Okay, which is pretty cool because you get kids going every which way. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, so yeah, well, if we need to, we can do them. I got straws. I got straws and. 40 styrofoam balls or something like that. But they have two complete kits in there to help you out. Now, they don't furnish the kits unless you become an NASA ambassador. When you go to the program, they give you a kit. But other than that, it's all online. It's a list of stuff. And I, I bet you it doesn't cost more than 100 bucks, maybe $150, depending on how good a shopper you are. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Oh. You said you um, help teachers teach it the right way. Mm -hmm. Do you get invited in? Both. I both. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be real rude or real crass and rude. I do this for fun and profit. Okay. I actually hire myself out to go to schools. Uh, I will tell them, you know, like $150, $300 a day, depending on what we're doing. I will come in and do this. I do a professional development for teachers. I charge $25 a teacher. Okay. The school systems most of the time pay that. Once in a while, like the homeschool groups, I just pick a day. We'll, I say, hey, uh, we're going to have this NASA Heliophysics program, come in, learn about it, you know, do some of the examples, and then, uh, you know, and I, I, for those people, I charge about 50 bucks, okay? So, and I try and get 15 or 20 people there, you know, something along that. But I also make the offer of, I will come to your school, your homeschool group or whatever, or come to your house, and I'll, I actually teach high school astronomy, physics, and chemistry for homeschool associations. I'm not licensed, I'm certified, whatever you want to call it to do that, okay? Uh, so I actually teach a 32-week high school class, okay? This is one of the things we use, uh, the Skynet Juniors we use. I mix them all in there. This is not something you're going to find in a public school system, okay? I have a little more leeway. Things that go boom, I can actually blow up stuff. <laughs> sorry, whoops, sorry. I didn't say that. <laughs> yes, yes, the, the, the uh, what is it, the, the voices and uh, opinions stressed by the speaker is not necessarily that of the management, <laughs> you know, and no batteries, batteries not included, and no animals are harmed during this administration. And you said you're starting a program in September. Yep. Is that in Fairfax? Or? Uh, nope, that is in Carroll County. Oh. I live in uh, Sykesville, Maryland, oh. and, but I do, this is like I do astronomy programs. Uh, again, the commercial is a dollar a mile round trip and a 12 pack of Dr. Pepper, you know. So I'm very flexible. I actually go down to Herndon a couple of times a year for a Girl Scout group. Uh, I'm trying to think. It, yeah, uh, I do a couple other ones that, uh, uh, Bullis summer camps. I do space science and astronomy there for them six weeks out of the summer. I just finished up. Uh, I do the fairs, do things like that, science fiction convention. I'm, I put the science back in the science fi, you know. So things along those lines. This is what I actually do for a living. I do work at Hands-On Optics a couple of days a week, uh, and I sub for a couple of different school systems. And so it works out, keeps me busy, keeps me employed, and keeps my kids fed. And I gotta quit feeding them because they are so big. <laughs> and I have a 13-year-old who's 6'4", okay? And my 16-year-old is 6'5", and he's afraid the other brother's gonna pass him. So, <laughs> all right, any other questions? If we're not, if I don't see any more, going once, so going twice. Three, three, you got to do a thing at 3 o'clock? Uh, I guess she wants me to help with the kids. Uh, my program uh, is Fun with Physics uh, Monday at 3 to 4, no, 1.30 to 3 or something like that. I don't know what time it is on Monday. But bring your kids out. The adults are also included. If there's a kid inside of you, you can come out too, okay? All right. 
Uh, we're going to basically, first of all, I'm going to suck their brains out. <laughs> I'm going to put them in large plastic bags and suck all the air out of them. Okay, and watch their eyes pop out. <laughs> then we're going to blast off rockets, and they're going to get rocket fuel all over them. And then I'm going to take a Bernoulli device, and I'm going to mummify them. So it will be, it might be fun. I'm going to have fun. I don't care if they have fun. I'm going to have fun. And I want to thank you all for coming out today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.